Hey everyone, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. Doing something a little different today. Uh, basically, uh, I thought I'd do a video instead of writing about it on the review page. Uh, if anyone recognizes this rascal, it's the, uh, it's the old Roban compactor mechanics for the uh, AS350 scale heli that uh, I did a review on here a while back. And uh, again, I just thought it'd be easier to do a video showing you a few things on it. It's a part for its basically its first two year maintenance, major maintenance. Uh, this was all brought about by um, picking up some or discovering some uh, quite a bit of play here in the main rotor shaft. Um, so discovered that both the upper and the lower uh, main shaft bearings were completely pooched. Uh, here's one of them, half of the other one. Uh, it's just tons of play. Surprised it hasn't fallen apart. Uh, so I suspect these are pretty much garbage bearings from the get-go. There's the outer race of the other one. Uh, it basically disintegrated as I was trying to tap it out of the plates. Uh, I thought it, I thought they would just be pressed into the plates, you know, with a moderate, you know, interference fit. But um, as it turns out, they're actually they're glued in with. Uh, you know, a 648 bearing retaining compound or something similar. So I had to heat, you have to heat the plates up to get the bearings out. Once you heat them up, soften the retaining compound, they come right out no problem. So that's the first tip if anyone's doing one of these. Uh, also had to replace the pinion um, shaft bearings, both of those. Uh, again, same thing, they're glued in. And uh, so we've got new new bearings in there as well. Uh, what else did we find? Uh, the other thing when we took it apart was, where are they here? Yeah, the, uh, the two umbrella gears for your, uh, for your torque tube, uh, they're complete, they were completely shot. Even though I had lubed them up really well on, on assembly, these are metal, uh, as you, you probably know from the review. Uh, but, uh, I'd lubed them up and didn't matter. Uh, you can't really see in the camera, I don't think, but especially on the torque tube uh, umbrella. These teeth are worn, they're, they're wafer thin. Um, and I suspect, you know, another few flights or one really good torque surge from the tail rotor would have stripped these out, at least partially. I don't think they would have completely failed. I think there'd be enough, uh, enough meat left on them to get you back on the ground under some form of yaw control, but uh, that was the other main thing I found. So Aerodyne sent me a new set pretty quickly, which was nice. They actually sent ones for the, uh, it came in a set of four, uh, the front ones and the two back ones as well. Um, back ones, surprisingly, for the tail rotor. Um, the umbrellas are in really pretty good shape. I am able to lube these, though, uh, more, and I have been lubing them, so that might be one reason why. And uh, on that note, when I get this thing back in the fuselage, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to have to cut a hole in either side of the fiberglass fuse in line with these. There's two little holes that here that you could get a, uh, you know, a grease, one of those, um, I don't know, syringe wands in to, uh, to lube up the, um, the umbrellas through there. Or I guess if you had a long enough one, you might be able to come in through the front. Uh, so yeah, so if you're taking one of these apart or you're doing service on them, don't be surprised if you're, uh, if you're not going to need your main shaft bearings, your pinion shaft bearings, and also your, uh, the torque tube front gear, um, bearings that are in these two, probably can't see it, it's too dark, but, uh, there's two bearing supports in here. Just use these little guys. Forget what the size is, five by 10 by fours. And uh, these weren't completely worn out, but there is a little bit of play in them. So I thought, well, I've got it apart. I was going to replace them. I actually replaced everything with ceramic bearings this time around. Uh, just thought they might last a little bit longer. Um, so we'll see. I actually took them apart. Uh, seems bearings now, they're all coming with this lightweight, essentially oil in them. Uh, everyone seems to have a hard-on for, um, you know, absolute minimum drag. Um, unfortunately, that also gives minimum life. So I cleaned them out, repacked them with bearing grease. Um, so we'll see what happens. 
you know, they're not a full ceramic. They're some ceramic hybrid, so you still do need lubrication in them. Um, other than that, everything... Oh, back to the gears. Why they failed in the first place, or at least my hypothesis of why they failed. As I said in the review, this tail is working its guts out. You know, we've got a two-bladed tail rotor with a tri-bladed rotor head. Um, that rotor head is producing just tons of torque. And this little two-blader, she's having a hard time keeping up. Um, you know, I've had this, the tail blow out in the wind. Uh, it, you know, you can tell it's just pitched over. It's just screaming and, uh, it, you know, the slider's pitched far over and it's still, it still can't keep up. It's still, you know, in a torque yaw to the, to the left. Uh, same thing if you're doing a fairly aggressive climb out, even at higher head speeds. I was finding this thing just kept blowing out all the time. It was just horrible. And again, you know, it's you can hear it. It's not happy. So on a uh, couple of visitors uh, to my site who read my review page, they actually recommended getting these asymmetric spin blades. Uh, part number um, 11, 700 to 105. 105H spin blades, asymmetrics by spin blades. I think it's hard to find asymmetrics. Um, anyways, the idea with an asymmetric is uh, probably can't see it in the in the camera here, but you've got a you've got a bigger airfoil on the top and the bottom. It's not a flat bottom blade. There is still slight airfoil on the bottom because you, you know we're still going to need thrust this way. But the idea is you're going to have most of your thrust to the left, more efficient thrust with this to the left counter, of course, the uh, counterclockwise torque from the mains. And um, yeah, so I'm going to give those a go. Hopefully that'll take a lot of the load off of the, uh, off of the tail rotor and uh, as a result off of the drivetrain. One thing nice with these, they're pretty much the exact same length as the originals. If anyone, any of you have got the AS350 uh, compactor, you know these blades are already squirting past that uh, horizontal fin, you know, with a few hairs width. And um, so going with a longer blade is not an option unless you want to modify the, uh, the horizontals, which I did not want to do. And uh, the other neat thing you'll see, it's a little bit wider in cord, probably about four millimeters, three millimeters. Yeah, no, good four anyways. So uh, yeah, we should be getting a lot more thrust off of these than we did off of the stock ones. Um, and hopefully we won't be pulling as much torque through it. But time will tell. Other than that, uh, everything was not too bad. Uh, one other niggly thing, pain in the butt, was all these shafts, um, they've got sp these tiny, thin spacers uh, to space out the gearing properly, both on your main and on your pinion. And uh, when you put a, pull it apart, uh, try to find, try to see those things before they fall out. I wasn't even I wasn't even aware they were in there. It doesn't say a thing about them in the instructions. So I just pulled it apart, and all of a sudden, you know, there's all these little spacers rolling all over the place. So didn't know where they went. Uh, so it's going to be trial and error. Already on the main here, I've got the main already back in place temporarily, just to get the spacing properly. Uh, there's still some axial play up and down, so I'm probably missing a shim between the gear and the uh, and the lower bearing. And then these little guys, these are for your pinion. Um, so it's going to be you know trial and error to find out where where to sh stick them to get the uh, shaft at the right length in here, so there's no uh, you know axial up and down movement. And more, most importantly on this one, it'll be positioning the belt gear uh, in direct alignment with the uh, motor or the motor belt gear. So the belt is centered, you know, on the gear. It's not riding high or low. Okay, this one's even got some little spacers. So that's the only other tip. Take this apart. Just watch for every spacer and uh, make sure you put them back in the right to uh, Red orientation. Uh, belt was in great shape. Nothing wrong there. Uh, again, I haven't got many flights on this thing. Uh, maybe 50, if I'm, that's just a guess. So to have those gears blow out already and the bearings, that's kind of, 
inexcusable considering you're not even flying this thing hard. So hopefully, hopefully these uh, ceramics or any other good quality bearing would last a lot longer. Anyways, that's the uh, two-year update maintenance type review thing on the old uh, AS350 for anyone who's interested. One other thing, I just noticed this when I was uh, playing around here before I started the old video camera up. The tail gear, or the tail, uh, the tail gears are all grindy feeling. So I don't know what's going on there. I'm, I've never, I've never had a tail strike. I've never forced this tail servo. Uh, all I can guess is that it was working. It too was working its guts out, keeping that pitch slider pulled far or hard over to keep up, uh, to keep enough thrust in that tail rotor, and it's. Uh, it's pooched uh, the gear set, or probably the main, probably the one that's pooched is the output, uh, the big aluminum output shaft gear. So there we go, another expensive uh, metal gear set to replace. I've been going through metal gear sets this year like they were candy. Getting uh, getting kind of sick of it. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's it. Hope it might help anyone who's taking one of these buggers apart. Cheers.